In this video, we will see how to journalize basic transactions and adjusting entries. After analyzing each transaction of the business, companies first record all transactions in a journal. A journal is a chronological listing of a firm's transactions, including the amounts and accounts that are affected and direction in which the accounts are affected. It records the financial data pertaining to business transactions, debit, and credit effects on specific accounts. The process of entering data in the journal is known as journalizing. A complete journal entry consists of the date of entry, the accounts into which the debits and credits are to be recorded, and a brief explanation of the transaction. To record revenues in the period in which they are earned and to recognize expenses in the period in which they are incurred, companies prepare adjusting entries at the end of each accounting period. Adjusting entries convert a company's accounting records to the accrual basis of accounting. Their main purpose is to match incomes and expenses to appropriate accounting periods. Every adjusting entry will involve one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Adjusting entry is needed in cases of deferrals and accruals. Deferrals are further classified into prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. Prepaid expenses are expenses paid in cash and recorded as assets before they are used or consumed. Unearned revenues are revenues received in cash and recorded as liabilities before services are performed. Accruals are further classified into accrued revenues and accrued expenses. Accrued revenues are revenues for services performed but not yet received in cash or recorded. Accrued expenses are expenses incurred but not yet paid in cash or recorded. Let's look at an illustration to see how to journalize basic transactions and adjusting entries. Selected accounts of Mido's company are provided. We are required to journalize the July transactions and the relevant adjusting entries required at the end of July. Let's first journalize the transactions that occurred during July. On July 10th, the supplies account has been debited for $800 indicating the purchase of supplies. This is recorded by debiting supplies and asset account for $800 and crediting cash and asset account for $800. On July 14th, service revenue has been credited for $2,500. It indicates that the company has earned service revenue worth of $2,500 on that date. We assume that cash is paid for the transaction as there is no corresponding debit in the accounts receivable account. To record this transaction, the cash account is debited for $2,500 and the service revenue account is credited for the same amount. On July 15th, salaries and wages expense has been debited by $1,350, which indicates that the salaries and wages expense have been incurred. It is assumed that the expense is paid in cash as there is no corresponding credit in the salaries and wages payable account on July 15th. To record the payment of expense, salaries and wages expense is debited for $1,350 and cash is credited for the same amount. On July 20th, unearned service revenue, a liability account, has been credited for $1,000. This indicates the receipt of cash for the service to be provided in the future. It is considered a liability because revenue has not been earned yet, but cash has been received for such unperformed services. To record the unearned revenue, we debit cash for $1,000 as there is an inflow of cash and credit unearned service revenue for the same amount. Let's now journalize the adjusting entries required at the end of July. On July 31st, supplies account has a credit balance of $1,000 and supplies expense has a corresponding debit balance of $1,000. It means that the supplies consumed during July equal $1,000, which has been recognized as an expense. When supplies are consumed, it decreases asset and increases expense. To record the use of supplies, we debit supplies expense for $1,000 and credit supplies for $1,000. There is a debit balance of $1,500 in the accounts receivable account as of July 31st. Also, there is a corresponding credit in the service revenue account for $1,500 on the same date. It is understood that revenue is earned for which no payment is made nor the transaction is recorded. Therefore, an adjusting entry is passed to record the accrued revenue, which is a debit to accounts receivable for $1,500 and a credit to service revenue for the same amount. 
On July 31st, Salaries and Wages Payable has a credit balance of $1,350. Salaries and Wages Expense has a debit balance of $1,350. It indicates that salaries and wages expense has incurred but not paid until July 31st. To record the accrued expense, we debit salaries and wages expense for $1,350 and credit salaries and wages payable for the same amount. The service revenue account reflects an ending credit balance of $1,150 and the unearned service revenue account reflects an ending debit balance of $1,150. This represents that cash that was received in advance for unperformed services has now been earned. Hence, an adjusting entry is passed to increase the income as the income pertains to the month of July. To record this transaction, unearned service revenue account is debited for $1,150 and service revenue account is credited for $1,150.